Rampage. Roger, ROV off deck. We can see that. So the Atlanta page is going to be what? That, that's going to be uh, 50 meg and Roger, 130 volts. Okay, I, I need to. Uh, do I need my TCM too? Clear to release. Clear to release. Can you come back? Are you guys good? Yep, we're good to go. Okay. So we're done with this for now? Yeah. Why am I not going forward? I'm going to turn up my joy gain. Turn up my joy again. It's like, where's it not going? Roger. Roger. So, some people turn alongside the ship right there. I do not. I take this really nice and slow. You just keep driving away. Uh, the ship's moving forward, so I'm basically letting the ship drag it back. Um, if you turn and fly too fast, see the people managing the tether there? Yeah. It becomes uh, painful. Oh, ground thought came back. Do you want me to start your amizo? Sure. What did I do? No, no. <laughs> it disappeared. And, uh, all the way up. Roger. Roger. Roger, working on it. Roger, we're working on it. You have to turn on your mezzo, sorry. You'll have to hit stop now. No. Sorry, we should wait till okay. we're headed down to do that. Um, we'll get it. So you can turn on all your, uh, everything except your lights and don't enable your thrusters, but you can turn them on. Uh, turn on my cameras. Yep, all your cameras. Uh, not the 4K, correct? Not the 4K. Okay, everything but thrusters and lights. Roger. You can turn the thrusters on, just don't enable them yet, because Mike's working around in there. Sorry, now you can turn on the mezzo. So Danny has to have his mezzo on, oh, okay. otherwise only one comes only up. Only one comes up. If I hit it, it'll come up now? Uh, yeah, if you hit run. With any luck, it'll find it. Sorry, I should have started laddering over a little bit quicker. And then once the ship takes you, it, it gets you there. I was, And so now I'm full ahead, and uh, my octans is stable enough to click in auto heading. And I am going to zero my tether wraps. If you zero your 6.8 over there. Zero 6.8? Yeah. Should be on Atlanta page. Zero uh, six eight wraps is zero right now. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
And uh, you can also light up the craft. Just press the blue button there. Uh, I haven't turned it on yet. I wonder where that ground fault's coming from. Band deck, Atalanta's in the Push water. Lights. Roger, Atalanta in water. So you can say, Hercus, dive, dive, dive. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You want me to say that? <laughs> that's, uh, if you want to have a little. That's my style. Oh, I got to open my boxes. Uh, Steve always says, dive, dive, dive. Uh, uh, some tray out. Tool tray out. No. Yeah, tool tray out. Torch retract. Hercus dive, dive, dive after it opens its box. Oh, yeah, with all that. It won't dive with the uh, box closed. There's too much air in it. Yep. <laughs> too much flotation. Oh, you want to give me uh, craft power? Yeah, stand by. Uh, one of these cameras is going wonky, but. Hydraulics, doing, doing. Oh, I guess I should turn on. Audio slate Vegas. for dive hotel one nine six seven UTC time zero nine four nine four five. Mark. So. Go ahead, Bridge. Yeah. Uh, um. Let's hold station here. And van back deck. Go ahead, Deck. Just want to confirm with you the stop uh, for Atalanta is going to be 75 meters. 75 meters? Roger. Roger, 75 meters. To that. Our craft is enabled. Thank you. We just do that to uh, allow us to lock up. It's less likely to get water in it. There's one of those very scary siphonophores. You can turn on uh, turn on all your lights now. Very scary one. Light banks coming on. Yeah, RV. This is science lead. Just let me know when it's a good time, and I'll walk you through our vertical transect. Uh, Roger that. After uh, we get control of the winch, will be a good time. All right, Roger. Okay. Lights on. And we're going to uh, pause at 75 to uh, chase a ground fault here. Hey, Dan, is that 75 because we have the long tether? Yeah, that's right. That's great, thank you. Well, I'm going to switch to the uh, dive, dive salvo now. Where is my Grafana? There we are. And I'm going to put this guy on the uh, gauges. If I turn on my mm -hmm. uh, down lights, you can see the gauges. Look at all the squid. See them, Megan? They're oh, everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> They're just going to ink you the whole way. It's going to be one stinky ROV. They like to be active at night. Can we uh, come all stop on the winch there? I'm struggling here. Is that all stop on the winch at 5 1 meters? Okay, I had that backwards. You can uh, speed up on the winch a little bit. Look that, coming back <laughs> up, heading to 75 meters. Roger, sorry that. I saw red numbers and panicked. your alarm page, Danny, and tell me when it refreshes. Yeah, uh, they were having trouble figuring out heading, and then I think he just took a while to get on bridge. Mm -hmm. Cool. 
What happened here? That was on two. Quick DC refresh. Okay. Let it refresh? Yep. <sighs> oh, okay. Oh, very nice. I like that feature. Okay. What the hell? Van deck, I'll stop at 75 meters. Control being sent. Roger that. Ready for control. Okay. Have a good rest. Hey, Dan, I'm missing your. Uh... Yeah, you are. I'm chasing a ground fault right oh, now. Oh, Roger. Thank you. Sorry, I should have warned you. Okay, refresh. Doing too many things there. It refreshed? Yep. I don't refresh. know. Refreshed? Three. Mm -hmm. Three o'clock watch change for the pilot. Uh, science, we're off comms up here. We're going to spend a few minutes uh, chasing a ground fault, and we're going to give you to the A-team. Mike, there you go. Sounds good. Uh, Danny, have yeah, you checked maybe. on the sub-bottom before? No sub-bottom. No, no, no sub-bottom on the landing. Okay, well then I will just take that off my list.
Good morning, A team. ROV, the science lead. Stand by, AJ. Copy. Thank you. Yes. Yes. And if we can get that camera clear and lasers on. Oh, is this like a water column transect? Yep, this will be a vertical video transect. Cool. Through the next thousand meters of water. Do you want to have like a uh, movement ahead for this transect or should we, okay. No, straight down, uh, ROV looking straight forward. I'm not going to... video hey how Oops. are you I don't want to talk about it um, all right I guess you're gonna ask for a white bounce or I'm gonna ask for a white bounce hey pilot can I white bounce now go for it please uh, yes thanks so I'm um, zooming all the way in I'm gonna get my focus I think if you could uh, just give me a bump to the right that'd be awesome oh that's perfect thank you uh, that's right close there we go then I'm going to go to about 80. Got it, 80 percent. I'm going to end here just so you can see it. I'm going to go ahead and black balance the camera now. This is going to take the camera dark for about 10 or 15 seconds. This is intentional, starting now. I'm looking for that to center up. And then this light will go out when it's done. They'll move up. They're good there. I'm back up. Good black balance, white balancing now. Get out of there, fish. Single push up. I want it white balance. Should end up perfectly vertical. Then the light will go out. I'm gonna push and hold to store that into a memory. I hear the beep, I'm good. White balance is complete, thank you pilots. So I'm focused about here to do that. So for the transect, I'm gonna go out about that much further. And I can, once we set up, I'll be able to tell over here. However many minutes it takes. Really? Is that AJ back there? Sounds like it. Are we doing a bottom transect as well from a, a thousand meter altitude to the bottom or just down to a thousand? And no, we're to just going to go a thousand from here. Great. Thank downwards. you. Hey, AJ. Hey, Josh. How you doing? I'm doing well. How you doing? No, I'm not answering that. Um, <laughs> you think it's time for the lasers? I don't know. You tell me. Can we get lasers on? Yeah, lasers on. Uh, I'm going to go and look straight at Herxus. The world. Get rid of this. 
I gotta bump in some uh, <laughs> gain so I can frame uh, my shot up. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's full. We're just uh, playing with the lights here, Ed. The instructions I have on lights is uh, broad coverage in the direction of travel. Broad coverage in the direction of travel. Also, if the ROV can be facing into the current. Okay. Ready to go down? Sure. Okay. All right, transect start. 10 meters A. Logger, did you get the transect start? Perfect. So does one of our scientists want to describe what is happening here? The vertical... Uh, That's an excellent question. Yeah. Unfortunately, you've only got an engineer. And Sean, what's your background? Biologist, perchance? Yeah, I am biologist. There you go. Um, but you also, I have a weird uh, background noise going on on my mic, so I don't know if I'll be on SVL for too long. <laughs> Okay. But yeah, in short, we're trying to do a long time series of ongoing vertical uh, surveys just to see, you know, what can be found in, in these waters here over a period of time and see if there's any change with time. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like we're looking to monitor pelagic animals, uh, fish invertebrates, gelatinous plankton. I guess count the specs, maybe? 
All right. Well, we certainly have. I don't think we that, count right? the specs. You don't think we count the specs? What do you do all day? <laughs> uh, well, it depends on what you're seeing in the water column. I've definitely had some water column scientists be like really freaking out over some specs, and I didn't see anything. So. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You know, some of the specs are stuff. They're all yeah, it's all. You definitely stuff. have to count them. Yeah, yeah. I definitely. But feel only a lot the of good specs. specs. Oh, okay. So there are like some foraminifera that are going to be speck-like. We'll see lots of jellies. I, s I spy a jelly. Yeah, yeah there's really a lot of jellies one. here. I mm -hmm. think those round disc ones are salismus. But I don't know my jellies very well. Yeah, it's hard to tell from way out there, but that sounds about right. I'm not sure what kind of squid species we have over here. At least not at these depths. When in doubt, decapodiformes. Yeah, decapodiformes. <laughs> it's my de default. There's a ketonath. playing with this the whole time. Come on now. So is okay, there a group of people who are annotating these uh, water column videos? Off-site, maybe? Yeah, there should be. Um, we have a crew of people back at ONC's headquarters that are looking at this live feed and doing annotations as we speak. That's great. They're using the, the C-Tube? Yep, they use C-Tube V3 uh, to do all our annotations. So you can follow along either uh, through um, C-Tube V3 itself or we have a uh, live page as well as Nautilus uh, where you can view our annotations in real time. All right, it seems like we're a little bit more in cruise control right now, so maybe we can take a moment to go around the room and do some introductions, um, maybe say who you are and what your role is on this particular dive. Do we want to start with Sean in the back here? Sure. Hi, I'm Sean nice. Tippett. I'm a data steward at Ocean Networks Canada. Uh, my role right now is a dive logger. So I am trying to capture as much information operationally as I can uh, during the course of this expedition. And uh, for this dive in particular, I'll be trying to pay attention to what's going down, what's coming back up, uh, try to get all those little details um, so that we can understand what we put down as best we can. Great, thank you, Sean. Jeb, I think, stepped out, so AJ? Yeah, I'm AJ Barron. I'm a senior project engineer in the physical operations um, department at Ocean Networks Canada. Uh, I'll be acting as dive lead here, so I'll be sort of helping the ROV pilots navigate our equipment and giving them tasks to perform, um, hopefully, you know, able to do everything without hurting our instrumentation and accomplish our goals. Um, yeah, I'm a mechanical engineer by background, so uh, also trying to help out a little bit with the deck operations and the rigging. Awesome, thank you, AJ. Uh, Megan. Hi. Oh, me, Megan. Um, yes. So in the front row, uh, this is your navigator, Megan Putz. I'm from the University of Hawaii. Oh, what's your role on this dive? Na I'm the navigator. Oh, okay. Our ROV pilots free. Oh yeah, we're always free for you guys. <laughs> <sighs> I'm Josh Tedarenko, one of the ROV pilots. Uh, I 
I move the big water tractor around. <laughs> Um, and I do what I'm told by AJ and Megan sometimes. <laughs> uh, the other pilots are not on comms, but we'll work on that for you. I'm Trevor! Okay, that was, that was a lot. <laughs> I don't like this game. A lot on the wrong side, right? Yeah. Not even the side of your face with the microphone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure if Ed and Pete are busy over there. Uh, hey, my name is Ed. I'm at the uh, video engineering position, and I'm not here. <laughs> I am leaving. But uh, replacing me is... Hello, I'm Pete. I'm taking over for Ed. You're the people that make I the video look SPL nice. I for that so people would hear you. <laughs> okay. So we have like a watch... And what about you, Kim? Yes, hi. Um, I'm Kim. I'm the SCF fellow uh, right now. Um, so in my day job, I guess, I am a computer science teacher uh, at a high school in California. Which, which thing? Where in California? Uh, I am in Orange County, California. So oh. I'm actually in between jobs right now. So I was teaching at a high school in Irvine, but I will be teaching at a high school in Fullerton. Very exciting. Yes, it is exciting. So as a CS teacher, could you run uh, uh, and help me edit some of these Windows batch files I've had to write in the last month or so? <laughs> sure. I sure. had to go into the Wayback Machine and try and remember those commands. Oh, goodness. Oh, All right. Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Okay, it looks like Jeb just got back too. Uh, we just did some uh, introductions. So uh, this is Jeb. Uh, do you want to talk about your role on this dive? Certainly. Can you hear me nice and clear? Yep. Yeah, I'm uh, one of the engineers responsible for preparing the instruments for this site. So I work with the PI, Dr. Martin Heisman, and get these uh, pressure sensors, um, acceleration meters, and batteries all set up so they're talking to each other and recording the data. Make sure I hit start on the deployment command so we actually record something. Yeah, so I'm here to uh, provide support to the dive if it's needed and watch it to see my hard work materialize. <laughs> well, that's pretty exciting. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Watch change it video.
ROV science. Hey, Jeb. <laughs> How's it going, Josh? Not bad, man. How you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, I'm game to do a little bit of troubleshooting with the uh, CTD you guys have plumbed in. Um, is it possible for you to fire up the MOXA and the port on that one? Stand by. Thanks. Yeah, I was able to ping the uh, serial server not too long ago, but it's off now. Oh yeah, no problem. Uh, GFI got worse.
three hundred. In the meantime, do you want the CPD powered on or off?
So Megan, are you going to tell us about all these cool jellyfish? Well, these are all mctophids that we're seeing now. These little fish are swimming around. I know, but I, well, yes. <laughs> but there have been some cool jellies. There are some cool jellies. Uh, I saw some larvation houses, a bunch of siphonophores. What's a larvation house? Um, so like, you, you saw those like big mucus balls that yeah. floated by with the little thing in the middle. So that's the house. The larvation itself is like this little kind of worm-like animal and it creates this um, house in order to filter out particles from the water and feed on them. But their houses get kind of gunked up with all the marine snow. So they'll ditch the house after it gets gunked up and then they'll build a new one. So we just see the like the old houses floating through sometimes? Yeah, you, yeah you see the old, old houses a lot, especially if they've got like a big snot bubble around them. Uh -huh. I saw a few suggested shrimps float by, some copepods. Um, when we were near the, near the surface, I saw something that looked like a barracadina. What's that? It's oh look, there's a this um, squid that's floating by. Yeah. On the right there. Yeah, cool. um, it's a. I forget what the common name is. I know what that squid is. It'll come to me. <laughs> I'll just start reading squid names. Yeah, squid names until, until, until I like, yeah, that's the one. What's the scale of this? Like, how big are these fish that we're seeing? Um, so the lasers, those two green lines mm -hmm. that are parallel, or that they're sort of converging in the middle of the screen there, um, they are 10 centimeters apart. The hard thing is here is that 10 centimeters isn't hitting anything on the on a solid surface sure um so they'll always be 10 centimeters apart they're never going to cross but these fish are probably about 10 centimeters they're pretty small yeah we just have to laser one to find out <laughs> yeah you have to get one that sort of lines up um with the lasers but yeah they're they're relatively small fish they might be up to 20 centimeters, some of the bigger ones. Mm -hmm. Could that squid have been a pajama and bottle tail squid? That sounds right to me. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, or yeah, or uh, Mike Vecchioni, he, he's our squid expert. He would know just by looking at it. And I've learned a lot. I just, this is a new part of the ocean for me. What part of the ocean do you usually study? Uh, I'm usually, you know, tropical Pacific I and sea mounts. Hawaii? Mm -hmm. In Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah. Is yeah, that so what you study? Yeah, so I study deep sea coral and sponge communities. Oh, that's awesome. So these water column animals are new to me, but mm -hmm. uh, I participated in a number of water column transects. And uh, when you have experts on the line who are talking about these animals as we're seeing them, sort of like making notes and uh, trying to learn all the animals I can. Yeah. But there's a lot of new stuff here for me. And we're also much nearer shore than uh, I'm used to. So mm -hmm. on the continental shelf, you're going to get higher um, density of animals as well as like the diversity of animals, I think, is going to be a little bit higher just because there's just so much more food in this area, especially um, how far north we are. We're getting a lot more food here, so more animals. It's not usually this dense when you're on top of a seamount. I've never seen this many mctophids yeah, before. Yeah, there's a lot. Do you think they're following the lights? Like um, they might the be. They seem, some fishes are very attracted to the light, mm -hmm. whereas others will actively avoid it. And in the past, if we had like the K60 on, I've noticed that a lot of that like scattering layer will avoid the ROV as it descends through it. So we're not actually surveying everything that might be here. Obviously, this is a great way to survey 
um, jellies and more uh, animals that don't actively swim away from you. Mm -hmm. But it's all chance. That's why we needed to keep doing more and more videos type surveys because there's a lot of ocean out there and we can only survey a small bit at a time. So the more data, the more robust our understanding. The name of that squid starts with a C. <laughs> I the, feel it. The common name? No, the scientific name. Well, AJ's up here with a whole encyclopedia pulled yeah, up. Yeah, Wikipedia squid. This is how you do it. <laughs> Chi the thing is, I can't even pronounce these. Cairo to you, uh, Cairo toothus? Yeah, whiplash squid. Yeah, the whiplash squid. Mm -hmm. or or cyclotuthis? No, it's not that one. All right, looking for C's. There's an eel. Yeah. No, that's a fish. The one that just swam that long bird. one. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was a fish, not an eel. What's that we're Actually, seeing in Argus Cam? Oh, that's um, some squid ink. Yeah. They, uh, they do like to ink us quite a bit. <laughs> and it's kind of smelly. So we don't like when they ink us. Have they ever like really nailed the camera lens? Oh yeah, no, they'll, they'll like ink right in front of the camera. And just like leaves this sort of mucusy bits. So they have two ways of inking, like cloud ink, and then you have this pseudomorph ink, uh, which has mucus in it. And so that's what you're seeing is like, it like sticks to mm -hmm. stuff. So like the cloud is like their ninja smoke and the, the pseudomorph is sort of like distraction here. This is more interesting and I'm gonna get away. Yeah. Yeah, now we're approaching that like 500 meters where a lot of these guys live. Yeah, it's definitely so seeming the density, more dense. Yeah, mm -hmm. is increasing. I think we're only surveying around the first thousand meters. Yeah, then we'll we'll increase our descent speed after that. Yeah, after a thousand meters, you're not seeing those vertical migrators anymore. Mm. And so all of these mctopids are, are going back down to depth because the sun will be rising soon. So they're making their way back. That's the key for these types of animals. They don't want to be seen. So they have a lot of different strategies in order to avoid predators. Um, a lot of the fishes are, are silvery and that reflects the light around them. Some mm -hmm. of these fishes have uh, bioluminescence that'll contract and like let them blend into the surface. Ooh, is that a viper fish? Stick fish. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, is it coming back? No. Other jellies that we've been seeing are uh, tinafores. So I've seen like at least three different kinds of tinafore. Tinafores are also known as comb jellies. So those are those little white bubbles that float by that have the rainbow kind of look to them. Mm -hmm. Fun fact from Wikipedia, viper fish is also a band from <laughs> Bulgaria, oh. Prague Rock. <laughs> nice. There's a suggested shrimp. Uh, where's my mouse? 
Come here, mouse. That's a cool squid. That one could be in this Sierra too, did he? So you're saying these type of fish they want to avoid the sun because it's like a way of not being seen. So they go deeper in the day and then they come up at night. Yeah, that's right. So is that like a nutrient transport mechanism or something vertically in the ocean? Um, well, like they, they go up and down every day. So like this is like all these tiny fish, they're really small and they're traveling 500 meters. And like, it's not just these fish, copepods, which are only a centimeter or smaller, they'll make that same journey as well. Wow. So like even these super tiny animals are, you know, traveling really long distances, especially if you consider their body size. Yeah. Well, it looks like they're traveling about the same speed that we're descending to, because a lot of them are staying. They're staying the with us, yeah. yeah. Yeah, these little fish can stick with us. So that's about 10 meters per second, I think, per, we're at per right minute. Now. Or per minute. Yeah. yeah, so we're not going very fast. That's amazing, Jeff. <laughs> Was that from 10 years ago? So we're in the same shirt. Are you looking at your uh, Nautilus picture? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't bother to submit a new one. And <laughs> AJ's remarking on the consistency in plaid over the years. <laughs> Well, I feel like isn't that a Canadian thing? Because I feel like you all are wearing plaid today. Was that your official uniform? This, yeah, this is Ocean Networks Canada plaid. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. There and this is. is just a coincidence. <laughs> it's just another shirt from Jeb's wardrobe. <laughs> yeah, you can't go wrong with plaid, especially in Canada. <laughs> yeah. Huh? There's a joke, you add tuxedo after the name of the city someone comes from when they're wearing plaid, so you say, oh, the Timmins tuxedo. That's the, <laughs> the plaid they wear up in northern Ontario. Well, I heard something about a Canadian tuxedo is a jean jacket, right? Yeah, jean on jean. Yeah, jean on jean. Jean, jean, yeah. jean jacket, jean pants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> AJ, please explain jean pants. <laughs> jean pants? Well, denim pants? Is jean the material? Jeans? Or... Do they belong uh, yeah. to jeans? Megan's got it. It's just jeans, AJ. Jeans. <laughs> well, then <laughs> what happened? What's, the, what's a jean jacket? Is that pants that you wear that up top? That is a top? jacket made out of jean material. Okay. <laughs> so... I rest my case. <laughs> Is that like the mucus house? Yeah, it looks like what Megan was talking about earlier. 
You see a lot of those. Um, I do a lot of scuba diving, and you see a lot of those just floating around, and oh, I always nice. wondered what they were. You dive mostly in California, or you travel? No, I do not dive in California because the water is too cold. Oof, <laughs> that's pretty brutal coming from British Columbia. Yes, so uh, I like to dive in warmer waters, much warmer waters. Uh, I just uh, was diving in the Philippines a few weeks ago, and uh, 30 degrees Celsius. That sounds nice. Yeah, I, it's very I nice. don't dive, but my wife dives for her research mm -hmm. in Nova Scotia. Oh, gosh. And it does not look like fun. No, you have to dry suit and wear oh, thermals yeah. underneath. And I would probably even invest in like an electric vest or something underneath my dry suit in that situation. Yeah, it looks miserable, mm. I'll be honest. But I'm sure she probably sees some pretty fascinating things down there. Yeah, I'm sure she does. She studies, she studied bryozoans that grow on kelp. Mm -hmm. So I don't find that fascinating. But I'm sure she does. Yeah, kelp is interesting because as a diver, it's like got this motion. It makes me feel seasick. Because it, it just like moves? Yes, and yeah. you see it just moving and yeah. It's been pretty rocky on this boat. Yeah, strap in. I think yeah. the weather's only going to get worse. Oh, goodness. <laughs> find uh, the the banisters, like the barriers on the top bunks here, are insufficient <laughs> as restraining devices. Yeah, well, even in these chairs a little bit, I feel like we're kind of <laughs> rocking a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Gives you that feeling like you're going to get knocked over. Yeah, they should invest in some hammock chairs or something. <laughs> So what was the highlight of scuba diving in the Philippines? Um, uh, I just like the biodiversity of like uh, Indo-Pacific oceans. So you see a lot of different things. Um, I always like octopus. I like um, the cephalopods and uh, the animals that uh, change colors and like their whole, what they do for mimicry and stuff. So I always find that pretty interesting. I was fortunate enough to be snorkeling in Maui earlier this year. Oh, nice. And I got to see an octopus kind of like swimming around, changing yes, colors, yeah. swimming around. And it was definitely the highlight of the right. trip. Yeah, and it was so funny because earlier today we had that octopus that attacked Hercules. <laughs> Uh -oh. But most of the time, they're like hidden in rocks and crevices, and they don't want to come out. So the fact that this one came out earlier and just like full on attacked. Yeah. Fight or flight. <laughs> yeah. I remember last year, maybe we were trying to plug in a connector and there was like an octopus living <laughs> in, the, in the connector. <laughs> we were trying to lure him away. <laughs>
video is doing a watch change. This is Pete. Have a good night. Jacob is your guy. Aloha kakahiaka. Good morning. Mic check. You guys can hear me, yeah? Beautiful. Aloha. We can hear you. Successful watch handover for myself in the SCF seat. Looks like the video seat was a successful handover. I don't think he has his ears in right now. And then... Nav also did a watch handover, yeah, Lynette? Yeah, successful Nav handover. Okay, whoa, 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 that was way too sneaky. I didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing, good job. <laughs> We're pretty stealthy like that. I hear there's been some action on SPL this morning with some octopus. I don't remember any octopus. There are a lot of squid though. Oh, there you go. Good correction. Got some catching up to do. It's nice to finally see blue water. Yeah, that last sight was a little murky, wasn't it? Just a tad. I know there are some little funny side jokes about a green piece of paper. It would be just the same. We're going quite deep today. I'm going to go to uh, around 2,500 meters. 
2,500 meters, blue to black. Thank you. I was like, who is talking? I'm like, oh, same person on my row. Hello. Hi, Sean. <laughs> Hello, Sean. I guess some introductions, if you guys are OK with that. I am Malanai Kane Kuhibinui, SCF. I'm going to send it to my side right over here. I'm Jeb Dexter. I'm one of the engineers with Ocean Networks Canada. I prepared some of the instrumentation that we're deploying today, so I'm looking forward to seeing that deployed. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, it's Jeb, J-E-B, for G -E -B. folks at home. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm Sean Tippett. I'm the uh, data logger here on the ship right now, so I'm going through and um, trying to annotate um, operational requirements throughout the dive, make sure uh, what we have down there is what we thought we had, and uh, what we bring back is what we thought we had uh, coming back up. Uh, yeah, and then <clears throat> my day job is a data steward at Ocean Networks Canada. Nice to meet ya. And despite what it sounds like, you are not hovering overhead in a helicopter. We just have some audio interference on your intercom key panel right now. Hence why I'm trying to stay off. Yeah. How's the view from up there? Oh, it's beautiful. Our morning traffic report. Thanks. Nice to meet you, Sean. Anybody in the first row would like to kick us off for our quick intros? Hey, everybody. I'm Lynette. I am the navigator. Hi. Good morning. <clears throat> I'm Josh. ROV. Um, driver, pilot, technician, etc. Dave? Whoa, 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 whoa. Same as me. <laughs> Buddy. <laughs> and Trevor's here, but I don't want him to yell in my mic again, so... He's here, he's, I don't know, he, he does stuff. I guess that leaves me. Hi, I'm Jacob, uh, video engineer, documentarian, usually video editor for OET. Should be fun. Thank you. I didn't hear this person right here when he spoke. On yeah, I think his levels were low. Okay. I bumped him up a bit. Thank you. Shoots. Dave, your levels are low, buddy. Well, that's a better level. That's all that matters, right? Oh, there you go. That's probably better. So we've still got about an hour of blue water to go, is what I was last told, checking in to see if that time has changed at all. Well, we got another 25 minutes on our horizontal transect, and then we have to go to 2,700 meters, I think. 2,504 on the dot, so 1,500 meters after, after that after 25 minutes.
Okay. Roger.
Okay, I'm gonna get some questions pulled up on SPL if you guys are okay with that. Um, so, these will be some questions that are coming in from a group of people called Science Friday. And these questions are actually for an interaction that we'll be hosting later on today. And it's kind of cute. Some of these questions are coming in from like really small children and like middle schoolers. So a little bit kapakahi the way it's written out. And I'm just going to ask it like, um, this is a funny question and I don't think we need to answer it, but I'll just ask it because I think it's funny. Why do sharks bite people? <laughs> that, that's a great question. <laughs> that, that happens a lot in Hawaii, doesn't it? It does happen a lot in Hawaii. So one person says hungry. Um, hmm. I I like to think of um, why sharks bite people. It's like sharks ain't got no other way to touch you. <laughs> if I want to touch you, it's like a the only with the, the teeth. only way to touch you is. Nom nom. <laughs> it's a tooth handshake. And they're like, oh, that's what you feel like. Never mind. That's not what I was trying to try to <laughs> taste. Yeah. It's like a taste and touch all in one. There you go. That takes me to the idea of senses, right? Um, the ability to observe. We use five senses. Sight, um, ears to listen, nose to smell, mouth to taste. But for sharks, it's taste and touch. <laughs> that's right. Okay. How, uh, this is a nice, funny, um, nice question. Where did I, I just lost it. There you go. How deep do you explore? Is the limit to the depth you can go? Is there a limit to the depth that you can go? Yeah, so at ONC, our deepest site that we typically go to is 2,700 meters. 2.7 kilometers deep. Um, I'm not sure what the sub is rated to. Maybe Josh can comment, ROV. Uh, that wow. was a big maybe, yeah. right? Josh? Yeah, really Second. embellishing that one. A, uh, okay. 4,000 meters. 4,000 meters. That's pretty deep. Like, in what way? Like, downwards. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I know there's an answer for this question. Can you, have you explored near underwater tectonic regions, specifically where tectonic plates meet? That's another excellent question. Mm -hmm. Well, one of our favorite sites that we visit all the time is the Endeavor Valley, which is a border between two tectonic plates. I believe it's the Juan de Fuca plate and the Pacific plate. Yeah. And uh, it's an incredible site. We'll be there hopefully in the coming days where there are hydrothermal vents and black smokers and all sorts of incredible geologic activity. And uh, we are going to use some of the instruments that we have on board to try to yeah, measure some of the properties of the water down there and, and the smoke that's coming out. And that allows us to study it. We also have instruments that study the movement of the tectonic plates. And I'll let Jeb talk a bit about that. Sure, we've got a couple seismometers that we're going to be deploying. Uh, you can recognize them. They look like these. A lot of people describe them like bombs. I think they <laughs> look more like the Death Star, the Star Wars thing. Sphere but, spherical uh, orbs. Spherical orbs, and yep, they measure the motion of the Earth and uh, over fairly long periods, up to minutes, and as quick as uh, 500 times per second. So they have a very broad band of signals they can measure. We're going to place one near these vents that... Uh, AJ's describing, and then another one in a different site, further in towards shore. Mm. 
Thank you. Um, do you mind explaining what do you mean by measuring minutes and seconds, please? Yeah, certainly. So the sensor itself picks up small motions in the earth, little vibrations, and those vibrations can happen at different rates, different speeds. And the sensor that we're using can pick up very fast changes when the ground is shaking very rapidly or even slower motion that takes a few minutes for it to repeat itself, either Earth moving up and down or laterally um, in the X and Y, north and south direction. And um, from what I understand, it's kind of a challenge to make a device that has such a broad response to uh, subsea signals like that. Thank you for clarifying that. I hope I didn't muddy it further. <laughs> no. Uh, pros and cons to the way I learn. I'm a very visual person, so I'm like imagining it in my brain. So when you explained the, the minutes versus the seconds, I'm like, oh, aha moment. <laughs> okay, I like this question. What kind of routine safety checks you follow to um, do you follow to reduce the risk to the Nautilus, um, its crew, the ocean, and devices it interacts with? For example, is there a recertification and inspection for the craft, or are the remote arms calibrated for precision? Are there se are there seat belts? Safety is on my mind lately. I'd love to have a seatbelt. Sounds like an ROV uh, question. Can I get a seatbelt? Um, the specific parts of the ROV are inspected and, and rebuilt if necessary every year uh, to uh, handle the ocean depth that we go to. Um, we calibrate the arms ourselves, uh, not every dive, uh, only if we have to. Uh, as far as the vessel itself, it is very safe. I cannot speak to its mm, recertification process, but I'm sh very sure that it uh, gets inspected and gets put into dry dock every few years, like most vessels, and uh, gets recertified and inspected properly. Um, so we have lots of safety briefings, especially the beginning of, uh, of any cruise to ensure that everybody knows um, what to do in the case of an emergency or anything like that. Um, so safety is number one priority for the people, uh, the ship and, and the ROV on board, that is for sure. We also drill, I think, every, every new crew. There's gonna be a drill at some point so that we practice how to respond in safety situations. Also, there are no seatbelts. But in the first few days in rough seas, I know I'm falling into pretty much everything. Thank you. I, I like to think of um, life vests as the ocean seatbelt, as in it'll keep you afloat. Mayhaps, so. But it won't really secure you to anything specifically, like a regular seatbelt in a car. It'll secure you to the car. Life vests don't do that. <laughs> mm. Ooh, I like this question. How do I become an ocean scientist? I don't know who can answer that, but anybody? I feel like maybe the data logger might be able to answer that. How do I become an ocean scientist? Yeah, uh, well, you... Yeah, I mean, there are many ways to become an ocean scientist or participate in ocean science. Um, you don't necessarily have to be a scientist to do that, um, but a good start is to, you know, get your fundamentals down. Um, you know, uh, good STEM background is always useful. Um, and then try to diversify to make yourself, uh, you know, uh, qualified in, in uh, various uh, facets of 
utility, like maybe learn a coded program or something like that, that might be useful in various situations. So, um, yeah, if you're especially uh, interested in the biology side of things, uh, definitely look into oceanography and um, marine biology as well. Thank you, Sean. I, I like that. Little Aloha morning message. Good morning from Louisiana. Hope you're having some good coffee this morning. Who's got their coffee on top? You do coffee or tea there, Dave? Coffee? Always coffee. But you're British. Yes, mate, but I'm not English. There's a difference. English people nice. drink tea. Well, I'm drinking tea. Probably got some English blood in there somewhere. Video, what do you got? Coffee, definitely coffee. <laughs> With a little whiskey in yeah, it. Yeah, I'm AJ and I'm <laughs> drinking rum. Here's another question that I hope someone can answer because I can't definitely answer this. Um, do you ever see a lot of marine snow? If so, what, organis what organisms are feeding on it? You're seeing it right now in the feed. All of this detritus is floating down. Some of it's live organisms, but you know a lot of it is also marine snow. And so it'll slowly uh, float down um, to the benthos at the bottom and here that's 2,500 meters. There are a variety of interesting organisms that'll go down there and live on the benthos and scavenge what falls down. So things like sea cucumbers, sea urchins. Um, yeah, those are typically the things that you'll see down there. Thank you.
Should be the last 50 meters of the transect. We got a question. Is there any plan to retire Hercules or upgrade? Hercules has just been upgraded with a brand new frame and a new foam pack. So, I don't believe any uh, more large upgrades uh, are in its near future, uh, and I don't believe it is being replaced anytime soon either. Is that why the porch got so much bigger? Did it have a hydraulic porch before? Maybe. Stand by. Uh, the old porch was hydraulic, but it was we. It was we. It was we. S small. Nope. Trevor said we. Okay. Uh, and so, yes, they've upgraded that as well. Hey, Trevor, nope. any plans to get a another seven-way? You can't talk to Trevor. All right, Josh, can you ask Trevor if there's any plans to get another seven-way? Uh, I'm just going to make up an answer. Um, no. <laughs> no. It is difficult for um, vehicles of certain horsepowers to operate two seven-way. Ah, uh, I see. It's just not quite the enough. The five-way is more fun anyways. I like it. This is seven function radar, though, right? Mongo, Mongo seven. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they're both seven. Yeah, they're both seven. It's just that the left manip is rate. <laughs> and we're coming up to the end of our transect. Sure are. Sure are. I like that it's got this speed uh, printout here so I can see exactly how fast we're going. How happy are you with the speed? Uh, Super happy. It's kind of over now, but yeah. Super happy, yeah. Super happy. It was wonderful. So there we go. I read a Herc depth of 1,000 meters. 1,000. Shall we go fast? Full send. Send it. You got that, Sean? Yeah. Great. I'm giving her all she's got. Go.
Okay, I feel like this question for Lin for Lynette, but I don't know how. I'm just gonna ask it. Are the Great Lakes, e.g., Lake Superior, well mapped? I know there are much smaller spaces than the they are much smaller spaces in the ocean, but when I teach Earth and space science to my middle schoolers, we focus locally. Also, there is some really interesting geology with our basins. Lakes, are they mapped? Yes, I would say the Great Lakes are very well mapped. What what do we have here, AJ? Any Manao? No. I don't know. <laughs> do you do you know where that data might be available? Is there like um, I guess like a database for bathymetry? Um, for the Great Lakes. Sure, for any bathymetry. Yeah. Um. So, NOAA um, kind of is in charge of a lot of that, um, keeping databases for bathymetry data and updating charts and things like that. Um, so, uh, let's see, I think if you Google like NOAA bathymetry data, you'll probably get directed to a website called NCEI, um, which is a repository for a lot of environmental data. Um, and there's a whole lot of bathymetry data there. So that would be a good place to start. In AJ's defense, he, just like I, grew up really close to the Great Lakes, so there's no way we could have known that. That's right, we're not qualified. <laughs> That's a good jelly. I missed the jelly. Yeah, it was on Argus Cam. I have too many screens blocking me from the big screen. Well, we'll have to slow motion rewind later. Just scooched over so I could have a better view of all the screens. I can make I can make room as well. I yeah, also have two screens good. in front of me of the same exact thing. Yeah, I can change this one if you oh. want something more exciting. No, I'm I'm just st staring at numbers changing and trying to like math was in my brain. What's actually happening in front of me? Oh, we're descending. Yeah, my hopo. All good. I'm chilling. What? I don't know what any of these do. Oh, the fun of all the buttons and what they can help us to do. Oh, it's the I see. Dun, dun, dun. Whoa. They're called jean pants. I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> Hey, Jeb. Hey, AJ. Great Lakes trivia for you. Which Great Lake do you think has the most population around it? Toronto makes me think Lake Ontario. 
What about like Michigan? Like Michigan. Michigan, right? Chicago? Yeah, which one's that on? <laughs> Michigan, I think. <laughs> Still Michigan? Not Superior? Not Erie? Well, huh? they'd argue that it's Superior, but... Go no, for it. No, ta no takers on that joke? <laughs> I'll go. Too, ah! <laughs> too bad. <laughs> that sounded condescending, but I appreciate it. <laughs> He'll take anything. I'm here all week. And then some. Yeah, Chicago is on Lake Michigan. Detroit's on Lake Erie. It's got Cleveland. I'll tell you which one's not the most populated. <laughs> Lake Superior. <laughs> Yeah, you've ridden through there, haven't you? Thunder Bay. Yeah. I've also been through Duluth. Not the most exciting place. Sorry to anyone from Duluth. Rude. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't say anything nice about Duluth. <laughs> Do we have someone from Duluth in the room? I'm not from Duluth, but kind of that area. Whereabouts? Um, northern Wisconsin. Northwest oh, Wisconsin. Yeah. Green Bay? I don't know anything about Wisconsin. It's where that 70s show took place? Yeah, Milwaukee on Lake Michigan, Green Bay is on Lake Michigan. Yeah, I think it's going to be Lake Michigan, if I had to guess. <laughs> well, let's keep searching until we find the right answer. How do you even search for that? <laughs> the biggest cities on the Great Lakes. 